من التزم السلفية حصل الخير كله وحصل أجرا عظيما وفيرا كبيرا لأنه لزم هدي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحد لله فلا مدل له ومن يذلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن خير الكلام كلام الله عز وجل وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدا وكل بدا دلالة وكل دلالة في النار وبعد الحمد لله we welcome the dear brothers and sisters again to another lesson from the lessons of the stories benefiting from the stories of the prophets may Allah be pleased with all of them may Allah have sent security and peace upon all of them our prophets our messengers the chosen ones from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alhamdulillah we're continuing with this benefits from the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam and the benefits from his iman knowledge practice and what he came with from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is on the 18th of Jamad al-Ula in the year 1442 al-Hijra con- corresponding to the Christian time date of the 2nd of December year 2021 and we're still continuing with the refutation of our Shaykh Shaykh Rabi ibn Hadi al-Madkhali Hafizahullah Ta'ala great scholar of Hadith in his refutation against a person called Adnan Arur in which Adnan Arur sought unity with the Jews and the Christians sought to join the ranks of the Muslims, of the Jews and the Christians and trying to unify the religions. So we're still continuing with that because it's such a beneficial refutation to make us understand the correct context of these different religions with, in, 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 in regard to our religion of Islam. Yes, we do justice to the non-Muslims, but we do not seek unity with them. We do not unite our religions with their religions. So with that, our Shaykh, Shaykh Rabi Hafizullah, is bringing ayat and proofs from the Qur'an and the Sunnah to refute this, this situation or this, uh, this ideology of uniting the religions. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the shaykh quotes, إِنَّمَا وَلِيُّكُمُ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولُهُ وَالَّذِينَ آمُنُوا الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَيُعْتُونَ الزَّكَاةَ وَهُمْ رَاكِئُونَ Verily, your wali, your protector or helper is Allah and his messenger and though the believers who perform a salat and give the zakat and they bow down and they submit themselves to Allah in prayer. وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا فَإِنَّ حِزْبُ اللَّهُ مُلْغَالِبُونَ And whosoever takes Allah, his messenger, and those who have believed as protectors, then a party of Allah will be the victorious. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تَتَّخَذُوا الَّذِينَ أَتَّخَذُوا دِينَكُمْ O you who believe, take not for awliya, protectors and helpers, those who take your religion for a mockery and fun, 
الَّذِينُ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابِ From those who were received, uh, from among those who received the scripture, the Jews and Christians before you. مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَالْكُفَّارَ أَوْلِيَا Nor from among the disbelievers. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ And fear Allah if you indeed are true believers. وَإِذَا نَادَيْتُمْ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ اتَّخَذُوهَا خُزُمًا وَلَائِبًا ذَلِكَ بِأَنْهُمْ قَوْمٍ لَا يَعْقِنُونَ And when you proclaim the call, يعني make call for prayer, the adhan, they take it but as mockery and fun. That is because there are people who understand, who don't understand. So the Shaykh is bringing this verse, <coughs> bringing this verse to emphasize this point, that the non-Muslims, as we, the Shaykh mentioned before, that the non-Muslims, they take our religion as mockery and fun. Even when we call them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Shaykh says, this ayah, these ayat mention the following. First one, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala limited having loyalty for the believers, the, the loyalty of the believers limits, limits this to Allah, His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa and to their brothers from the believers. That the loyalty that the believer has is to Allah, to his messenger, and to his Muslim brothers. And this incorporates, includes negating loyalty, the, uh, the, the believers having loyalty for the non-Muslims. And this invalidates this call to wahdat al-adyan, of unity of religions. So this loyalty that we have, it's for Allah. Yani in submission to Allah, what Allah has mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah, what Allah has mentioned as in Revelation, that's where our loyalty lies. Foremost. And to His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and to the believing, uh, the, uh, the, 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 to the believers. Yeah, from their, from their blood brothers, from their believers. The second point, that whoever Whoever, uh, uh, whoever shows loyalty to Allah and His Messenger and the believers, then indeed they are the Hezbollah, they are the party of Allah, and they will be victorious against their enemies, the enemies of Allah and His Messenger and the believers. So we know that the non-Muslims will never be our true friends. So we don't take them as close friends and companions. Yes, we deal with them. Yes, we have buying and selling with them. Like the Prophet ﷺ did. We work, have work colleagues. Plus work colleagues. But we don't take them as friends and protectors. We don't trust them. The Sheikh says, from the greatest of means for victory, that Allah gives for the believers above the non-Muslims is that the, a person that has a, a loyalty to Allah and His Messenger and the believers. Loyalty meaning submission, accepting what Allah has ordered him with, accepting what the Messenger وسلم, ordered him with and showing loyalty to the believers. And nobody does this except the Hezbollah, the party of Allah. And the Shaykh says, and this did not cross the mind of Adnan, this person who is showing loyalty and friendship and closeness to the, the Jews and Christians, that does not even cross his mind. The third point the Shaykh mentioned, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited and warned the believers of taking those who take the, their religion as mere fun and games, mockery and play, uh, play from the Jews and the Christians and the Kuffar uh, 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 who uh, taking them as taking them as awliya, taking them as friends and protectors. So the Shaykh said that Allah warns against this. 
that those who take the religion of Islam as a mockery. They make fun about it, they joke about it. The Sheikh said, and that these kuffar, on their different religions, they take the call to prayer and the prayer as a mockery and fun joke. They take it as a play. And the sad thing is that this has become prevalent amongst the Muslims now. This is the sad state of affairs, unfortunately, that even amongst some of the Muslims, that they've become like this. Yeah, that they play and joke and laugh about the religion of Islam, about the prayer. And especially those people who come on television and use media as a means uh, to promote their agenda. So, for example, you'll find there's a few tele television programs in England, in the UK, and this is widespread on YouTube. Any, any methodology, any uh, means that they can use, you'll find that they'll bring comedy programs, humor, jest, joking. So a person feels uh, fooled, thinking that, oh, it's funny. Then right at the end of the episode, they'll bring in something uh, to to uh, give da'wah to their uh, agenda. Give da'wah to their agenda. Okay? So, for example, when they have this mockery and they joke and they laugh about people being free to do what they want, Especially with, they use women. They use women. Okay? They use women. They say, and, and the, the woman it could be a non-Muslim actress, pretending to be a Muslim, playing a Muslim part, and saying, I'm free to do it with my body what I want. I can have many boyfriends if I want. It's my body, my choice. So the whole way through the comedy, you think it's always oh, so funny, it's very light-hearted, it's a joke. And then towards the end, they bring their agenda. By that time, you're captured. You're captured with thinking, oh, it's just a joke, it's just funny. And at the end, they put their poison in. So beware and be careful of these people. These people who, amongst the Muslims, they say, la ilaha illallah, they might even pray once in a while to show the people, Allah knows best. But, they have their agenda of spreading their filth. Spreading their filth. So the Sheikh said, that these kuffar, upon their different religions, they take the call to prayer and the prayer as a mockery and a jest and joke about it and laugh about it. And we've seen this so many times, even amongst the kuffar programs, that they make a mockery of Islam, of the Muslims. And Hollywood is well known for that. Hollywood is well known for that. Yani from the day they started making programs on television, the black and white movies, back in the, the, the day, they would always uh, revile the Muslims. They would show the Muslims as bloodthirsty. They would show the Muslims as chasing after women. They would show the Muslims as gamblers. They will show the Muslims as wasting wealth and these type of things. And this is the, the way the Hollywood has brainwashed the people to think that this is how the Muslims are. This is how the Arabs are. This is how the Muslims are. To frighten the people away from Islam. But Allah's plan is greater than their plan. Then the Sheikh says, if this is the reality of the enemies of Allah, and this is their stance against the Muslims, Islam, and, the, and their people, and the Muslims. So, can it be possible? Can it be possible? That can it be possible that the Muslims yeah, should be truthful to them? Uh, sorry, is it possible that the proofs of the Muslims can actually believe in uh, uh, what they say and their religions? 
So it's possible that the Muslims, even with, you know, they're the enemies of, this is their reality, that they're the enemies of Islam, the enemies of Allah. Is it possible that we can believe them in them belittling us with their religion and they, their play and their mockery, and, and, and uh, more so than uh, this da'wah of uh, calling to unity, calling to unity, having loyalty for them. You know, they take our religion for a joke, and we, we should go and have, uh, is it possible that we could going to believe them and, and, and become, um, uh, and, and, and show loyalty to them? More so, their dawah to uh, mix our Islam with their religion, and, and having unity with their dawah, and having a one rank along with them? How can this be? How can this be, this, this statement or that you're calling to Adnan, that's what the Shaykh is saying. This statement that you're calling to that we have unity of religions. How can it be when they, Allah tells us, they take your religion as, as joke and play? Your prayer, your call to prayer and everything is a joke for them. And we've seen that so many times. We've seen that so many times where the non-Muslims joke about our religion, but we have no shame. Muslims, generally, we have no shame. And we say, ah, ha, ha, ha. Because we have an inferiority complex. And this is one of the most, the evil things that colonialism did. It subjugated the people into accepting the kuffar as our leaders. It subjugated the Muslims into accepting that their civilization, their identity is better than our identity. It's better than our identity. Whereas the identity of Islam is stronger than color. It's stronger than wealth. It's stronger than status. The identity of Islam, of the Kitab and the Sunnah and the way of the Salaf is stronger. And that's why the Dawah Salafiya, Ikhwan, is a very dynamic Dawah. It's a dynamic Dawah. And that's why the enemies of Islam are so scared of it. Because we're teaching the people the foundations. Go back to the Quran. Go back to the Sunnah. Go back to the practice of the Salaf. Go back to their, that, that foundation, that principle, that base that you can build upon. And that's why our scholars will teach us. And that's why they, our scholars are the Rabbaniyun. They teach the people the basic foundations. They build upon that. Not what the, 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 what the, what these, uh, hyped up callers jumping up and down, speaking against the Muslim rulers, committing terrorist acts they what they do they're not call us to islam they they're just uh people that are hyped up and we don't believe the hype the next evidence that the sheikh brings is the statement of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qul ya ahl al kitab this is number 3 point number 3 um ayah number 3 qul ya ahl al kitab hal tanqimuna minna illa an amana billahi وما 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 انزل الينا ما انزل من قبل وان اكثركم فاسقون say O people of the scripture Jews and Christians do you criticize us tanqimuna criticize us for no other reason than that we believe in Allah and uh, and in the revelation which was sent down to us and in that which was been sent down before us okay and that most of you are farsiqud and rebellious and are disobedient to Allah. Allah says, قُلْ هَلْ أُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِشَرٍ مِنْ ذَلِكَ مَثُوبَةً in the Allah. Say, O Muhammad, to, وسلم, to the people of the scripture, shall I inform you of something worse than that regarding the mathubatan, regarding the recompense from Allah? مَنْ لَأَنَهُ اللَّهُ وَغَذِبَ عَلَيْهِ those Jews who incurred the curse of Allah and His wrath, وَجَعَلَ مِنْهُمْ قِرَتَةَ الْخَنَازِينَ and transformed some of those into monkeys and swines, pigs. وَأَبَدَ الْتَاغُوتْ and those who worship the تَوَاغِيتْ and the false deities, idols and stuff. أُولَئِكَ شَرٌ مَكَانًا such a worse in rank on the day of resurrection in the hellfire. أُولَئِكَ شَرٌ مَكَانًا and far more astray from the right path. When they come to you, they say, we believe. 
But in fact, they enter with an intention of disbelief. And they go out the same way. Go out with the same. Wallahu a'lamu bima kanu yaktumun. And Allah knows well what they are hiding. وَتَرَى كَثِيرًا مِّنْهُمْ يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْحِثْمِ And you see many of them Jews hurrying for sin and transgression. فِي الْحِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ وَأَكْلِهِمُ السُّحْتِ لَبِئْسَ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَنُونَ And eating illegal things such as bribes and interest, evil indeed, etc. And evil indeed is what that which they, they have been doing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I'm said the shaykh is bringing uh, another verse from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, another ayah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, telling us and forming and warning us about these people. The shaykh says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarifies in these ayat the condition of the Jews and their reality, their dark reality, the evil reality. Number one, they criticize the, uh, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the believers with what has come to them. That they believe in Allah and they, uh, and what Allah revealed to His Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the Quran and the Sunnah. And they criticized them for Im- having Iman in the books that were revealed to all the messages from before. And this benefits, and this benefits that the Yehud do not believe, this benefits us that the, uh, that the Yehud do not believe in what was revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nor do they reveal, nor do they believe in what was revealed to the messengers before them, their previous ones, from them, Musa, Wa Isa, alayhima, alayhima as salatu was salam. Because they, uh, overstepped, because they had, uh, yani they showed enmity towards the Torah and the Injil. And they interpreted them, or they, Harrafuha, I mean, they changed its wording because they did not believe. And they could not handle what was in them from the Dawah to Tawheed. From the Dawah to Tawheed. And we see this in their books. There's so many references. If you ask somebody who was previously a Christian and somebody who knew their religion, you'll find that they will tell you and inform you that there are many places in the in the Bible that had references to the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they couldn't, they, they changed it and they couldn't accept that. They couldn't accept that. They could not, the Shaykh says, they could not accept, yeah? they could not implement what it had of manners and rulings which opposed their desires. And from here, our, the scholars of Islam, they say, we believe in that which was revealed and not in that which was changed. Not minu bi bi munazzil, wala mu mubaddal. Not minu bi munazzil, wala mu mubaddal. We do believe in that which was revealed and not with that which was changed. Yanna mubaddal, because that which is inscribed in that which was changed is that which uh, which is uh, written or inscribed or inscribed in that which is being changed is kufr and shirk. In fact, it is uh, attacking and insulting the the prophets alayhi salatu was salam. And we find that amongst, especially with the Bible, that there are so many references. Audha billah. So many references to accusing the prophets of such evil acts. They have no shame in doing that. They have no shame in uh, accusing the best of the people, the prophets, of such filth and horrible things. And they claim this to be the Bible, which, and that, that is really the Bible which they have changed. The second point the Sheikh mentioned regarding this ayah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarifies that the Jews are the most evil of people in, uh, with their reco- reco- and they will have a recompense from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will pay them back from, because of what they will have. And this recompense and what they pay back will be with a hellfire and what an evil destination. The, sh- the shaykh says, 
And from this recompense, that payback they will have is the many curses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which he has sent down upon them and the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon them. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed them into uh, apes and swine, pigs. And that they are the most evil of people and they are the ones who are misguided from the correct path. And that they are the worshippers of deities, you know, idols. And from their kufr and their shirk is that they say Uzair is the son of Allah. And then they, uh, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarifies, Allah shows and clarifies, and what is the example of the hypocrites of the munafiqun. So, we find that the Jews are the worst of the people. Okay, this is not hate speech. This is reality. Reality. The Jews are a hated people because of their evil. Because of their evil. And Allah will give them back their recompense. Allah will pay them back their recompense. And they have the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon them. When you see the Jews, and we're talking about here the real Jews, you see that they're not happy. If you go to Palestine, if you go to Israel, you'll see that these people are not happy. They're not happy because they have the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see their faces, their faces are, have no light, they have no color, they have no nur on their faces because the difference between a person who has nur, light on his face and the one who doesn't is like the one who remembers Allah and who doesn't remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who remembers Allah and the one who doesn't remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a very important matter. The dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that which gives us light in our hearts and on our faces. Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us nur. As is mentioned by the Prophet in this hadith, the difference between the living and the dead is the remembrance of Allah. And this is the state of the Jews. They are not happy people because they have the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon them. They have the curses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon them because they killed the prophets. They killed the prophets. The Christians claim that the Jews killed Isa alayhi salam, and we'll see that on the benefits and the stories of Isa alayhi salam. Yeah? The Jews claim, uh, the Christians claim that the Jews killed him. But in around 1960s, once the United Nations were formed, the Christians, and this is in the United Nations paperwork, amongst their uh, de- uh, uh, dealings, and amongst their, uh, one, amongst their reports, that the Christians apologized to the Jews. Look at that. They killed their God, yeah, as they claim, the Christians, they claim that Isa is God. They killed their God, and then the Christians turn around and apologize to the Jews. Okay? SubhanAllah, look at that. Look at the, 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 the bartel, the falsehood in all this. Okay? So you, this is the way of the Jews. You won't find the ha- Jews happy. You won't find the Jews happy with what they, they were upon, because they know. They know their history. They know what they've done. They know but we still treat them good. We still call them to Islam. We still do justice to them. We do justice to them. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that some of them, from them, he turned them into, into apes and pigs. Now, some of the Muslims, they take this to mean that all the Jews, and Jews are pigs and apes and they're descendants of them. No. The, what is mentioned in the tafsir of Ibn Kathir, and other tafsir as well, is that they died out. This, this, this group of Jews that were turned into pigs and apes, they died out. They weren't allowed to uh, procreate uh, and uh, have offspring, and they died out. But this was a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But yeah, they're the relatives of, of, of uh, apes and pigs, and that they are misguided from the right path because they worship deities. So like the Christians, 
the Christians worship the cross. They worship the cross, they hold on to this cross that the Jews, well, as they claim all these stories, that they tied up Isa alayhi salam on this cross and they, they killed him on this cross. And yet the, the, the Christians uh, find uh, salvation in holding on to the cross and worshipping the cross. So some Christians, they'll have a cross with an idol of Isa alayhi salam, yeah, an idol of Isa alayhi salam in, in, in their places of worship, in their houses, in their cars. And, everything. and some of them won't have the actual idol yeah, the, the the idol of Isa alayhi salam. They just have just the wooden cross, and they use that as a as a uh, as a means of salvation. They they say that this is our tool. Yeah, this is a protection. So they'll have a a necklace with a cross on it, or a bracelet with a cross on it. Yeah? They're worshiping the thing that they that their god was actually killed upon. Oh, the billah! What is this foolishness? Okay, the religion of Islam is free from all this. Religion of Islam is worshipping the creator of the heavens and the earth. And we know the creator of the heavens and the earth has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, the creator of the heavens and earth, described himself. Described himself from the Quran and from the Sunnah, from what he said with the prophets with. Very clear, very simple, very straightforward. None of this complex stuff. Then the shaykh goes on, he says, if this is the situation of the, the, the Jews, so... Can the Muslims, can Islam and the Muslims have respect for one who calls to uh, unity with them in their deen and their character? Yeah? And he does not differentiate between Islam, the deen of Allah, the truth, and between the the deen of the Jews, which has been changed? How can this be? How can this be? It shows you the, the... the, the, the falsity, the, the false claims of these people of unity of religions. Number four, the ayah number four, the shaykh says, and the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفُرُوا مِنْ أَحْلِ الْكِتَابُ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ Those of the Jews and the Christians who disbelieved, those of who, those of who disbelieved from the Jews and the Christians and from mushrikeen, Finari Jahannam Khalidina Fiha will abide in the hellfire for in the in or will abide in the fire of hell. Ulay Kumushar al Bariya. They are the worst of creatures. Inna Ladina Amunu Aminu Salihati Ulay Kumu Khair al Bariya. Verily those who uh, believe and do righteous actions, good deeds, Ulay Kum Khair al Bariya, then they are the uh Best of creation, best of creatures. Sorry, they're the best of whom khair al bariya. They are the best of creatures. Jaza whom in the rabbihim jannatu adanin, and their reward with with their Lord is uh, God, uh, paradise. Jannatu adan, yani adan the paradise. Tajri min tahtihal anhar, under under underneath which rivers flows. Under, underneath which rivers flow. Khalidina fiha abada. They will remain therein forever. They will abide therein forever. Radiallahu anhum. Allah is pleased with them. Waradu an. And they are with him. liman khashya rabba. That is for him who fears his Lord. And this is an ayah in the Quran. Or ayat in the Quran, which are read regularly. Why? Because they're from the last part of the Quran. And these ayat are read regularly in prayer. A lot of the Muslim imams, they read these ayat from Surah Bayina. Okay? So they should, we should have a reflection. We should have a, a, an understanding. But we find this Adnan Arur calling for unity of religions. Yani Abrahamic faiths, as they claim. The Shaykh said, Shaykh Rabi'ah, and in these ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala distinguished between the kuffar, the makhlul kitab wal mushrikeen, and between the believers. In, 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 uh, in totality. So the, the path of these kuffar is to the hellfire. They will remain therein forever. They will remain therein. And they are the worst of, uh, worst of creatures according to Allah and the believers. And in contrast to that, in opposite to them, are the believers 
who do good deeds, who actually do practice, uh, they are the best of creatures and their reward is with their Lord Jannat, paradise, which under, underneath which rivers flow. And then after that, they, they have the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon them. And they, are, they themselves are pleased with Allah. And the, 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 uh, the pleasure of Allah, or Allah being pleased, is greater, as is mentioned in other ayat. Ayah number five, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the shaykh quotes, Ya yuhalladheena amunu, in tuti'u fariqan, in tuti'u fariqan min alladheena utu al-kitab, yurudduqum ba'di imanikum kafireen. Oh, you who believe, if you obey a group of those who were given the scripture, the Jews and Christians, they would indeed render you disbelievers after you have believed. Yani, they will make you go back, yeah, make you go back to what they were upon. Ayah number six, the Shaykh brings, the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, la tattakhidhu bitanatan min dunikum la ya'lunakum khibala, khabala, waddu ma aniktum, kad badat al-baghda min afwa'ihim, وَمَا تُخْفِي صُدُورَهُمْ أَكْبَرْ قَدْ بَيَّنَّ لَكُمْ آلْآيَاتِ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْقِنُونَ Oh, you who believe, take not as your bitana is like advisors, consultants, any close friends. Those outside your religion, yani Jews, Christians, pagans, mushrikeen, since they will not fail to do their best to corrupt you, they desire to harm you severely. Hatred has already appeared from their mouths. But what their hearts conceal is far worse. Indeed, we have made plain to you the ayat, evidences, if you understand. The Shaykh brings ayah number seven, calling it ta'ala, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, in tutiyu alladheena kafaru, yurudduukum ala akabikum, fatanqalibu khasireen, balillahu mawlaakum huwa khayru nasireen. O you who believe, O you who believe, if you obey those who those who disbelieve, they will send you back on your heels and you will turn back from faith as losers. In fact, Allah is your guardian and he is the best one to give you aid. So the Shaykh says, after mentioning his ayat, these ayat have uh, a warning, a severe warning from obedience or obeying of uh, 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 having obedience to the kuffar, you know, obeying them, uh, 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 obedience to them in that of their religion. Yeah, and we're not talking about the, the worldly matters. We're not talking about the worldly matters that you know, uh, uh, for example, how to drive a car, traffic lights, uh, passports, uh, rules and regulations, which you know. Uh, based upon that a person can be put in prison and these type of matters we're not talking about that we're talking about their religion in, uh, 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 these ayat have a severe warning against obedience to the kuffar and they uh, have an explanation of what what it leads to of this obedience from the kuffar and being uh, being in loss in the dunya and in the hereafter the Shaykh says in these ayat is a warning against taking that the believers take advisors and consultants and friends from the uh, from, from other than themselves. Other than themselves, they're taking yani from the kuffar al munafiqeen. Okay, look at that. Very precise. Here, the kuffar al munafiqeen, and that the kafirin la ya'lunhum la yaksiruna fi khudalihim. That yani the kuffar they will not be deficient in forsaking the believers. Yani, uh, being harmful or being detrimental to, for the believers. Then the Shaykh brings an I, uh, the, uh, the statement of Ibn Kathir, rahimullah. Yeah, brings tafsir of the ayat of Ibn Kathir and the ayat, the one we mentioned before, Ya yuhal ladhina amanu, la tattakhidhu bithanatan min dunikum la ya'lunakum khabala. Okay. 
ما تخفي صدورهم أكبر قد بينا لكم الآيات إن كنتم تعقلون أو you believe take not your, as your بدانه friends, protectors, advisors, close people uh, those outside your religion يعني Jews, Christians, منافقين since they will not fail to do their best to corrupt you they desire to harm you severely hatred has already appeared from their mouths but what their hearts conceal is far worse indeed we have made plain to you the ayat if you understand Ibn Kathir rahimullah, the great scholar of tafsir he said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in prohibiting his worshippers, the believers, from taking the munafiqeen as friends and consultants. Friends and consultants. You need some advice in your religion, you need some advice in your worldly life, personal worldly life, things that matter to your religion, don't go to the munafiqeen. I, yani meaning, the Sheikh said, uh, Ibn Kathir said, that the believer opens up his secrets to them. And that which will cause uh, uh, a victory for their enemies. And that the munafiqoon that the munafiqoon with their striving and their strength cannot corrupt the believers. Eh? Meaning that they go out in opposing them. And they try to harm the believers with everything that they can. From their, what, what they have the capability and possibility from evil planning and deception. And they want and they desire that the believers are hurt and, and, and place difficulties upon them. And the, Ibn Kathir says, as regards the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لا تتخذوا بطانة من دونكم Take not بطانة, advisors and protectors, uh, those outside your religion, he said, meaning, من غيركم من أخل الأديان From others, from, uh, from the other religions. And you don't take friends and protectors, close friends and protectors from other than yourselves, uh, from others, from the people of the different religions. And the bitana the rajul, yani here, the, what does it mean, bitana, yani clo- consultant, close friend, for that, for, uh, for a person that is khasati ahlihi, yani somebody who's very close like a family. Yani someone who uh, actually uh, is exposed to that which your family has uh, 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 in, in your, your private matters. So exposing, you know, uh, uh, that person to your private matters, your private uh, dealings, your private situations. You have private situations, okay? With that, we come to the end of today's lesson. You'll find that, yes, the, these uh, are very similar, very similar. That's because the sheikh is um, emphasizing these points. The sheikh is uh, drilling home this point and make it to be understood completely so there's no scope left for any uh, doubts to come in, yeah. Any doubts to come in. This is not that we're showing hatred for the kuffar in that sense. Rather, we do justice, but we hate their religion. We hate their uh, what they are upon because they are upon shirk and kuffar. But we do not hate them as individuals because from them they could be righteous people. You know, and in the sense that they do good deeds. But they're ignorant of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah? They're ignorant of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They want khair and they want to do good. So we have to understand all this in context. So we don't become astray like the khawarij, the terrorists, who start 
uh, killing and harming the non-Muslims. No. Ours is giving da'wah to them. Our manhaj methodology is giving da'wah, da'wah to the, the non-Muslims and calling them to Islam. Jazakumullahu khairan. May Allah reward with goodness the brothers and sisters who uh, broadcast these lessons. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashadu wa la ilaha illallah. Anta astaghfiruka wa tubu ilaik. Sallallahu ala nabiyya Muhammad.